Prince, you and I worked over at, uh, at I, I worked a bunch of your fights over at HBO. You're here at ESPN now. How's your experience been so far? It's been a great experience. You know, I'm happy to be here amongst uh, a lot of other great fighters at ESPN. But I mean, like, the reason I ask is because ESPN is very plugged into kind of mainstream popular culture of sports as opposed to being kind of a niche sport. Do you, are you sensing that? Are you, do you feel like awareness of you who are considered by many the best pound for pound fighter in the world has risen? Of course, when, when you talk sports, you talk ESPN. So it's a big platform to be on. Uh, I'm happy. Let me get right into this because I'm very, very curious about this. I want to know why this man. I know why he wants you. You're considered one of the best in the world, and obviously you're a champion, so he's coming for the belt. Why this man? Why do you want to fight him? Well, he's considered one of the best welterweights out there. Uh, he's took a couple of losses, but as you know, all the other top welterweights have fight dates. Uh, we would, would have liked to have another top welterweight lined up, but it didn't happen, so we got to go to the next best opponent. I mean, talk to me about this, man, because obviously, you know, when, when people look at you, you listen, 33 and 4 is 33 and 4. We know that you can fight at the same time. You've suffered a couple of devastating losses. Um, talk to me about what this fight means to you to go in the ring against this guy and why do you believe you can beat him? Well, first of all, you know, when the opportunity came to me, I was like, yeah, I would love this fight. I mean, Terence is up there being one of the best pen -pen fighters in the world and having a world title as well. So this is just a massive opportunity for me to turn down. If I want to be where I want to be, if I, I've always said I want to be a world champion again, I want to be one of the best fighters coming out of Britain, this is the fight I need, I need to win this fight. So I'm not only coming here just to make numbers, I'm coming here to win the fight. Um, it's very hard when I fight these other guys who are a little bit less calibre than me, I mean, because it's hard to motivate myself. But this is a fight that I'm going to be well motivated and I'm going to come in to win. I mean, and I know where it can take me. You, you're a silver medalist. You have a lot of boxing skills. You're very fast. You're not afraid to fight anybody. Um, and yet, sometimes watching you, it feels like your heart gets in the way of your head. Yeah, so, right. like, you start opening yourself up and getting caught, and you've been a bit chinny. Guys have hit you, have hurt you. Your fighting heart is not in dispute, but people feel like they can reach and dent your chin because of that fighting heart. How does, uh, first of all, how do you respond to that? I mean, how I respond to that, I mean, is when I, when I have made mistakes in the past, I ran onto shots. Um, Obviously, when you do get hit with a good shot, you, if you run onto it, it's going to be twice as hard. Uh, maybe I've been off balance at times. Uh, but, I mean, this fight, I know I can't make that mistakes. I mean, I've gone into the ring with guys who have never thought that can knock me down, and they have knocked me down. Um, I mean, the last loss I had was against Canelo. Just, I mean, I have to you say You were boxing that, well, but he caught you. Uh, yeah, he just caught me with a great shot, but I was, I was boxing well. Uh, but, you know, that can happen in boxing. But in this fight, I know I can't make them mistakes, and... I'm going to be on my egg. So ha the best I've ever seen you look is in fights against Zab Judah and Pauli Malinaji Correct. when you moved up in weight and yeah. outboxed them right in the middle of the ring. You were hitting them with three, four punch combinations. Good defensive fighters, middle of the ring, completely yeah. outclassing yeah, yeah. them. How do you get to do that against this man who is considered by me here, Lomachenko, or constantly considered the, the best pound for pound fighter? Yeah, I mean, the way I have to do this is I have to be very smart in the ring. Um, I've, I've got, I'm going to set a game plan and stick to that game plan. I know things can go wrong in a fight. I'm not going to let that happen in this fight, especially because there's a lot to lose and a lot to gain in this fight. So I'm going to go in there and do what I do best, stick it to the game plan, will get me through this fight. Terrence, I want to know how does fighting him help you in this regard? We know that you've got your eyes on the ultimate prize. You want to unify the belt. You know, you got Errol Spence Jr. out there. You got Keith Thurman out there. You got a few others out there. You look at going up against a guy like him. How is that going to help you specifically as you, you know, because obviously you're confident you're going to beat him. How is that going to help you specifically as you aim to just take over the welterweight division? Well, you know, Americom has been in the ring with a lot of great fighters. Um, me beating him will put his name on my resume and move up on another level, I suppose. Uh, in a division, a lot of people will say, oh, how is he going to beat American? Is he going to beat him in what fashion? So I just believe, like, how how I finish the fight or how the fight goes. But does fashion, but does fashion matter to you in this particular fight? Is it, is, is it about just... You have to look impressive. Gonna, yeah, yeah. I, right. I'm thinking you've got to look impressive in this fight to sort of force 
people's heads to get you in the ring with the other fighters that you truly, truly want to have the other belts? Well, it don't matter what type of fashion I, I win. I just want to win. And then on top of that, that's still not going to get the fighters in the ring with me. Because if you looked at my last previous fights, I stopped them all. But considering that you're locked out of some fights in the division, the fighters you would like to fight to prove yourself, we, we keep talking about Lomachenko, a stable mate of yours now, a promotional stable mate of yours now. People are constantly comparing you to who's the best pound for pound fighter in the world. Do you think you need to not just beat Amir, but dominate in order to make that case for yourself? Uh, no, I just think a win will uh, make a case. Let me ask you this. You, first time I, that, that we, we were on HBO when I was, I was calling your fight against Bradis Prescott, you were brought in as a last minute replacement. Not only did you show exquisite boxing skills, switching up South Pole, Orthodox, the whole thing, but you had a mean streak in you that slick boxers sometimes don't have. I've seen you knock a guy out, and afterwards, I'm doing the post-fight interview, and you're barking at him. Usually, fighters are hugging, and all everything's forgotten, and you're still mad after the fight. I don't sense animosity here. How do you feel about Amir? And is that something you need to work up, like a hatred of your opponent, or is that just based on the guy's personality? I believe it's the personality. I don't have no problem with Amir. You know, he respect me, I respect him. We're gonna get in the ring uh, April 20th. We're gonna do our thing, and you know, I'm gonna shake his hand afterwards, but when the disrespect started to come in to play, then that just put a little Real, chip on my shoulder. Super shirt. quick, who's the aggressor in this fight? I mean, it's hard to say because, I mean, Terrence likes to come forward. I like to come forward as well. I mean, I think it'll be a bit of a mix, really. Terrence, you coming to get him, or are you guys boxing? You got to wait and see. Somehow, some way, I sense a knockout coming. <laughs> Period.